The Pitch and Prime podcast is presented by Brew HQ, your home brewing headquarters. Whether you're an advanced brewer or just starting your brewing journey, Brew HQ has everything you need. Enjoy fast, free shipping in Canada on orders over $75. Get 10% off your first order by going to brewhq.ca and use coupon code BREWPOD10. That's B R E W P O D and the number 10 at checkout. Brew HQ. Life is brutal. Today is January 3rd. Welcome, 2019, and welcome back, listeners. Happy New Beers is in order for all, and we are happy to be back with you. In this episode, we are ringing in the new year with a pint and good food. Whether prepping for a holiday, having guests for dinner, or having a night at the local watering hole, food and drink have made good friends for many years. But what goes with beer? Are there rules? What do tomatoes and IPA have in common? This is the Pitch and Prime Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Primack. Joining me today, Marcus Mueller, chef and blogger from Prince Edward Island, gains much of his inspiration from the resources in his own backyard. His blog, Earth, Food, and Fire, focuses on from-scratch cooking with other lifestyle simplicities. Learn from his cooking how-tos and his connection to beer. We will also be whisked away to a culinary haven with Janie Bogardis, chef and designer of the cozy artisanal menu at the Watch That Ends the Night in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. She will tell us a bit about the relationship chefs have with their ingredients and serve up the Brew HQ crew with one of her beer recipe creations while explaining her back-to-basics philosophy. Grab a pint and sit back while we tease your taste buds and earbuds. All right, we're sitting down with um, Marcus Mueller via Google Hangouts. Uh, we have Marcus on the line. Marcus is a chef in PEI uh, in the town of Charlottetown. Uh, his blog is Earth, Food, and Fire. Welcome to the show, Marcus. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? Not too bad, not too bad. So we're uh, talking today on the show, Marcus, about uh, pairing beer with food. Um you know that's it's uh, you know food and alcohol go hand in hand uh, back to the ages. So you know we want to get a chef's perspective. Uh, what are the considerations uh, when when creating food and beer pairings? But uh, we'd like to get to know you a little bit first. Can you can you tell us your background? How how you got your start in the arts? Uh, was it on a whim? Or is it a lifelong dream since childhood? Um, no, it wasn't necessarily a lifelong dream. I kind of fell into it a little bit. Um, I was pushed into cooking a little bit by uh, through high school. I did a co-op program where I did an apprenticeship at the Prince George Hotel in Halifax. And uh, I kind of did uh, 200 unpaid hours just basically volunteering, helping out in the kitchen. And I got a, got a liking for doing the grunt work, I guess. <laughs> and um, I was good at it. And I liked doing it. So I kind of kept at it and I ended up working there over the summer and then I went to uh, Nova Scotia Community College and I did the culinary arts program which uh, eventually led to me doing my Red Seal and um, I did an apprenticeship in Switzerland for three months and yeah I've basically gone from there just working various restaurants working my way up um, before moving to PI here. Awesome awesome and so I also understand um, you have a, a small uh, I guess, background in brewing. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I haven't done a whole lot of it. I'm, I kind of dabbled with it when I was in, living in Halifax. Um, basically, I mean, as I'm sure it does for most people, or a lot of people, it started out of a kind of, it was a cheaper way to get beer as opposed to going to the liquor store. You make your own batch and you get 50, 60 bottles worth as opposed to um, 12 or 24. And um, so I kind of started with the kit and, uh, got all the gear together and then uh, started with just a basic ale and made a, it was like kind of like a Rickards Red inspired ale, I think, mm-hmm. and um, kind of took off from there. And then I played around with uh, using some hops and kind of doing a little bit more of uh, from scratch, I want to say, doing it yourself, doing the mash and boiling everything. And uh, yeah, it was always fun. I always liked the idea of being able to create your own flavor and it's really they're all unique every batch is different so it's right so it's always something exciting when you get to try the first beer and and do you do you draw some kind of links between the two worlds between the the food production and the, and the beer production does it give you that same thrill 
Yeah, it definitely does. Um, I mean, Earth, Food & Fire is all about cooking from scratch and doing things, I want to say, the old way. Um, there's so much convenience food out there now that everything is pre-made and you just have to pop it in the oven or in the microwave that uh, a lot of the skills and um, I, I want to say the art is almost lost behind how certain flavors are created and why things are done a certain way. Um, People aren't experimenting with food as home as much anymore or with, with beer for that matter because it's easier to just go out and buy your own. Um, so I, like, I really like the aspect of being able to make your own, play with various flavors um, and yeah, try, try new things. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is it doesn't taste good, right? <laughs> well, tell us then, you know, when if, if you're preparing a meal um, to, to pair with beer in mind, um, I know chefs like to have fun sometimes with their menus that way. Um, what are what are some of the considerations that you have to 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 take into account as opposed to using traditional ingredients that you would cook with? Um, uh, well, there's a few things. I mean, beer has been served with food for uh, generations, years. Uh, it's just recently now that it's kind of become more popular that to well that you pair beer with food as wine has been kind of the tradition. Um, so there's this really uh, I don't want to say regulated, but there's a defined set of yeah not rules that you'd follow to pair wine with food, and you can almost apply the same uh, yeah methodology to beer where uh, in wine tannins add bitterness, so you can kind of complement a certain wine with food depending on how bitter it is or how fruity the wine is and you kind of get the same thing with beer where um, barley adds sweetness to the wine uh, sorry to the beer <laughs> and hops adds bitterness so you can kind of play around with different types of beers um, a stout for example is much heartier of course than the lager so you can pair something like something heavier like that with the stew much easier than you would with um, this fried piece of haddock or something. Interesting. So, and then are there, you know, also certain kind of spices or, or, or kind of flavors that you're looking for to pair with a certain beer, you know, like what are the, what are the do's and don'ts? I mean, there's, of course, as with wine, there's different styles of beer as well, right? Um, ales do really good with, uh, I want to say American fast food pizzas, uh, wings, things like that. Um, porters and stouts are great with heartier foods, things with a little bit more ro more robust flavor. So um, stews, uh, smoked foods, um, chocolate is great paired with stout. So like you'll start seeing in desserts, even um, pastry chefs use beer to make ice cream. Um, they pair it with ice cream and uh, chocolate sauces, things like that. Um, wheat beers and lighter Lagers are great with shellfish and seafood in general, just where it doesn't really overpower the food itself. You kind of need to strike a balance too, right? You want to still be able to taste the food and then have the beer either complement it, where there's similar flavors, or have a contrast where it's something totally different. And then you go back to the food and it's kind of, they play off each other, the flavors. And uh, what flavors typically come come through? You know, obviously it doesn't taste like you're, you're drinking a beer when you use different beers you know what I, I guess what particular styles would really shine through a particular dish you know like it, what, what would you use an IPA for kind of thing yeah so an IPA I kind of I mean it would be great and if you're making like a tomato sauce even um, if you're cooking at home or if you have some chicken you're cooking um, I've done it many times uh, Traditionally, in cooking, you would use wine to add flavor to sauces, uh, chicken, steak, anything gravy you're cooking. You can always add a splash of wine, um, but you can do similar. You can just do the same thing with beer. So if you have a steak in the frying pan on your stove and it's starting to kind of turn really dark around the edges and um, the steak's almost done, you can just add a splash of beer right to the right to the pan, and it'll kind of create the sauce right in the pan. But like as in regards to the flavors that come out, so. It depends what what the beer's flavor is. Like a, a Rickard's Red and Ale um, would do really well with um, a roast chicken, for example. You get some of the sweetness. It would it would add bring out the sweetness in the ale um, as you're cooking out the, the liquid. So I've used I've used it to make sauces. Uh, 
you can add some to mashed potatoes in theory. You could add a stout to mashed potatoes and do stout flavored mashed potatoes. I mean, it's kind of up to anywhere you would use a liquid in a recipe, you could in theory substitute it with beer. And and so that that also kind of leads me into you know what what methods of cooking you've you've kind of touched on that a, a little bit, but what what methods? I guess if you're trying to you know fire a steak on the grill, though you're obviously not going to be pouring beer over no, it. So exactly. uh, um, so like in that situation, you'd probably if you want if you're grilling steak outside or something, um, the best place to add the beer would be in your barbecue sauce, right? So if you're when you're make if you're making barbecue sauce from scratch, you don't have to make it from scratch. Even if you have a bottle of barbecue sauce heat it up in a little pot or something and add a little bit of beer to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just kind of heat it up and cook it so it's not too thin and then just slather it on your steak. So that's an easy way to get um, some beer flavor into it. Of course, the more beer you add, the, the stronger the flavor. But you can also um, steam vegetables. Take a light a light uh, IPA, for example, if you could steam um, beans or broccoli with it. Um, you could infuse flavor that way. You could uh, even uh, simmer simmer chicken in it. Uh, I have a mussel recipe on the blog. You can uh, cook mussels that way, clams as well. Um, basically, you just saute some onions in a pot and add your shellfish and then pour in a bottle of beer and put a lid on and it'll, as the, the beer evaporates, it'll steam, steam the shellfish and kind of infuse the flavor into the, the food that way. Yes, I, I I was actually going to uh, bring up the the mussel recipe that is on the blog. Um, you steam mussels, and it uses a Belgian ale, which is quite a unique. Um, what do what do you feel the Belgian ale brings out as compared? I mean, we know Belgian beers have have more of the kind of spice estery kind of character. Um, you know, and the steamed mussels I've had with beer have usually been kind of a plainer beer. So. What what gave you the idea for the for the Belgian ale? Um, it was just a personal preference, honestly. Uh, I I'm a fan of Belgian ales. I just thought would uh, would add a good another kind of layer to the flavor of the mussels. Um, that particular recipe has garlic in it as well. So um, if you were to use something a little lighter, like an IPA, um, you wouldn't you would have more of a, a shelf. Well, the mussel flavor would would be there. So and yes, in this case, the Belgian ale adds. Uh, I don't want to say it overpowers the mussels. It does add more flavor, but um, it just it's just a different flavor combination. And I thought, why not give it a go and see what happens? And it ended up working out really well. The flavor was great in it. Yeah, no, it sounds it sounds amazing. I'm going to definitely be trying it uh, myself at home. Most chefs, I guess, uh, they like to cook seasonally. And obviously, you, you do. That's 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 what you, you promote through your blog is is uh, more hands-on using the raw ingredients and, and kind of using traditional methods of preparation. Yeah. Um, so so with cooking seasonally and creating dishes seasonally, does it add another layer, layer of comp- complexity when you're trying to pair it with a beer or is that that just as natural as, as kind of seasoning with salt and pepper when you, when you finish um, pretty much any dish? It's not as natural, I'd say. I mean, uh, cooking itself... If you do it a lot, certain things will just start coming more naturally, like you say with salt and pepper. After a while, you get an idea of how much salt to put on something. Um, using beer is you can. It takes a little bit more practice, almost. That's why I like I like the idea of, for example, the mussels experimenting with it because you're not really sure until you do it how it's going to turn out. So, um, using seasonal products. I mean, in the winter, for example, you usually have heartier meat-based dishes, so you'd probably gravitate more towards something like a stout or um, a porter or something hardier again to, to pair with it. But then you have the yeah, craft breweries these days that they're doing all kinds of um, special beers. And uh, you have so much more variety. You can go down to the store and you can, you can pick out a special ale or a special uh, available and, create completely unique variations and i think if you're brewing your own beer at home you can take that a step further by uh you can spice up you can make like a christmas ale or something here you could do a, a pumpkin flavored ale at home right and this is such as um, cinnamon allspice ginger if you get those flavors coming out once once the beer cooks looks a little bit 
So it sounds, I, I mentioned, I, I asked if it was a, a complexity, and it, it, it seems like, well, it's not a necessarily easy uh, task. It, it sounds more like it's an enjoyable kind of a journey. I mean, it is. It, you do have to do almost a little bit of research if you want to get really good at it, and it's, I think it's something that's becoming more popular now. Um, but it is, the, you do have to experiment with it and just try new things. Yeah, it's, so can you tell us maybe what your favorite recipe that uses beer in, either your, your own recipe, your own creation, or, or, or one that you've had in your travels? Um, I really like using uh, beer in stews, um, simply uh, uh, as opposed to red wine in this case. Um, I just find it adds, uh, it adds some sweetness, but at the same time, um, the bitterness and kind of the, the hoppy flavor. So, but at this, it doesn't overpower it, right? So you kind of, um, if you're cooking a stew on the stove, I really, I just pour in a bottle of beer as opposed to water. If you're, if you need to add liquid to it and let it simmer with, with the beef and it becomes yeah, delicious, <laughs> you just got to thicken it at the end. But like, like stew with beer. And what about beer in general? What's, what's your favorite style? Um, I would like a German style, I'm not sure if that's just due to my German background that I'm a little partial. <laughs> right. um, it's kind of what uh, I was exposed to at home once I started uh, exper- drinking beer and um, being exposed to different kinds. It's what my parents had around. So uh, I think that's what I gravitate towards. Excellent. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Marcus, uh, for giving us your time. Thanks for having me. Love trying new beer recipes? Love getting things delivered right to your door? The Brew HQ Brew Box Recipe Kit subscription is exactly what you need. Just surf over to Brew HQ, select your method of brewing, pick a batch size, and pay for the year. Every quarter, we'll package quality ingredients for an exclusive seasonal recipe and deliver it right to your door. No hidden fees, free shipping. The Brew HQ Brew Box Recipe Kit subscription, bringing the brew to you. I'm sitting down with Janie Bogardas, head chef, the watch that ends the night in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. How are you doing, Janie? Good. Thanks for having me on. Great, great. Well, thanks for inviting us. Uh, we're actually sitting in the in the restaurant now, and it's a beautiful space. Um, you know, very ni- kind of modern, but it also has, you know, I guess a bit of a, an, an old world. I feel like uh, you you really went over an antique shop with a fine tooth <laughs> comb, yeah. and really picked out things that just uh, you know this. They, they seem to have a nostalgia to them. So yes, so. yeah. And when uh, the original owner uh, built this place, he wanted to have a lot of uh, 50s cocktail bar, kind of hotel lounge vibes. Uh, we're talking about food and beer today, um, and so w- w- which is an interesting subject because I, I would say, and you, you might agree, Janie, that today um, people are much more curious about the preparation of their food, where it comes from, how it's made. They, re- they really want, you know... Um, food that's coming from the heart and soul, not from a big uh, warehouse somewhere in Ontario, and then they ship it down to you and you reheat it. Um, and to to echo that, uh, there's a beer boom. Craft beer is booming. Um, it's a very exciting time for the beer industry. And so folks like yourself are, are, are starting to integrate um, the beer and food into kind of one holistic or, or, or natural product. So um, I know you are a craft beer lover and a, and a local beer supporter. Um, so maybe speaking as a chef, what is your relationship with beer? How often does it come up uh, and take part uh, when you're creating a dish? Uh, well, I love beer, <laughs> so that helps. Um, but we're pretty lucky. We have like a really good selection of craft beer here. Um, Cody LeBlanc kind of runs that beer program. Um, and I'm kind of fortunate enough to have this like understanding with them that if a keg's almost empty, save me all the ends because I'll do something with it. I'll brine something, I'll make a sauce, you know, we'll, we've done a bunch of beer mustards in the past. Um, a, a lot of traditional cooking, you use wine 
and I'm all, I've been replacing a lot of wine for beer <laughs> lately. Okay, so bringing it in, modernizing it, and making it yes. more approachable. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, people do feel, I guess, wine is a bit stuffy. Yeah. And, I mean, wine is good. I drink wine as well. But uh, beer is a little more comforting, I suppose you could say. Right. And when we think about, like, fundamental cooking, like... Uh, risotto you always make with white wine stock is there's always wine in it um, the only catchy or the only hard part about cooking with beer I find is the gluten aspect mm -hmm. because of course that is a huge thing now um, that I see in the restaurant a lot is gluten allergies so just I, I guess like being um, vocal with that like like I'll always put on the menu, you know, like beer sauce or beer jus, beer Dijon, just so it's out there and people know. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think beer brings a really great flavor to cooking, like even in uh, jus and stocks and places where wine is usually used. You know, and before we go further, I guess, I mean, I should ask, have, have you yourself dabbled in brewing? Do you, do you know that side of things or do you enjoy that side of things? I have not. Have not. Uh, we do a lot of fermentation here, so <laughs> there's a... Without the cooking of the, of the, you know, no, I haven't. <laughs> I don't even know the words. I'm not going to try you, and pretend. You enjoy yeah. from far away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but that, that kind of leads me in, into where I'm going, though, because you do have a certain understanding of fermentation. You prepare your own aged meats and fermented foods. You've mentioned mustards. Um, and, and, and these are the types of things that not many restaurants uh, can produce or, or are willing to produce, mm -hmm. uh, does it give you an edge when it comes to approaching other unorth unorthodox menu items uh, to, to have these things in your repertoire? So for instance, again, an ingredient such as beers, it's not a very common uh, ingredient. So, so do you think w with that prior knowledge of fermented and unique foods that you have um, a, an edge with beer? Uh, I think I think we definitely have an edge with the preservation focused menu. Uh, when we first opened, we our menu was very small and it was completely preservation. Uh, it's a bit niche, uh, and our menus changed quite a few times um, before even landing in my hands. And now it's sort of like we do have those. Uh, cured meats and preserves and fermented items, but we also have some more approachable dishes. I would say that beer is becoming a lot more approachable in food because everybody likes it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I think more restaurants in general are cooking with beer. I wouldn't say it's more that we have an edge, so we're doing it differently. But yeah. and, I, and I suppose I meant more more you personally. Do you feel you have a, a better understanding or a keener idea of how to utilize a fermented product? Uh, whereas the restaurant does have a focus on those types of, of right. dishes. And I, yeah, I guess I think part of that is like, uh, I hate food waste. So again, with like the bottoms of the kegs, like I'm mm -hmm. like, I've seen so much thrown off. And actually at my last job too, we would save all the runoff from every pint um, okay. and cook with that. So that, uh, I guess I started cooking with beer in my last job because of the, that. They had like a really um, common staple on the menu. It was like a beer sauce with uh, yeast and soy sauce and lemon uh, and it's super umami super savory and it was pretty much on the menu all the time wow. so we always had it for that as well as they would save the runoff and make beer bread in-house yeah, uh, and beer bread. yeah <laughs> and that was actually really cool because that was something the dishwashers made so it was really cool to like see them involved too right, and so everyone kind of had their hands in in, and, the, beer, and, yeah. and, and, <laughs> in the creativity and yeah. in the beer of course yeah uh, do, do you feel it's trendy to use beer in cooking, or, or does it have some merit? An example, you know, I've, I've been in a restaurant before, and you, you see the steak and ale pie, you order the steak and ale pie, and here I'm thinking it's been nice and stewed in the beer all day, but you see the chef run out and grab two ounces of beer from the mm. tap. You know, it's, is, is, there, is there a way to look at this, or is it all up to how you interpret it? Uh, I'd say it's open to how you interpret it. Um, there is a lot of like cool things being done with beer in food. Like um, we did a food and beer dinner here uh, as part of the Four Hands. Um, I think that was with yeah, it was with Joe Martin from Stillwell, uh, and that was really fun because every course had beer in the food, and then was paired with beer. So there's there's some 
famous chefs out there. Uh, Daniel Burns has a whole cookbook, Food and Beer. There's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with beer. I think it's becoming more approachable in the fact that, like, we are in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, and there's all these breweries popping up, and everybody's eager to utilize what's around them. You know, it's part of growing that local menu scene is having local beer and breweries of any kind uh, on your menus. So yeah, and and you met, you've mentioned the the four hands uh, series, which we'll we'll get to in a little bit. I do want to ask you about that, um, but first, uh, so so I guess tell me a bit about your approach then when when you're going to use beer in a dish Do you, are you inspired by a, a particular beer um, or is it just kind of you conceptualize a dish and it happens to include beer um, yeah it depends a bit of both uh, depends on if I'm using kind of uh, the spent beer you know right, and yeah, if I'm just kind of throwing it in a brine uh, although like for example I would never put like a sour to brine meat um, because I do find that it almost gives you know, not a bad taste to the pork, but it's not something that you would... Um, Maybe more of a texture. Thing yeah, it almost person, starts yeah. to, like, cook the meat more than brine it. Mm-hmm. So usually when I'm doing anything with, like, um, especially pork, I go for darker or, like, IPA, stouts, um, okay. even some lagers. But, like, it, again, it just depends what you're doing. Like, we have a chocolate cake we make a lot with stout, but I also, like, mm-hmm. really prefer porter for it because it's a better... Uh, finish so uh, wow so there is a lot to to consider there it's yeah, not it's, it's not just uh, getting a beer that has the right color <laughs> there are some flavors and, and some other components you're considering yeah it's been a bit of trial and error for sure like like I've never had something bad that I've made from beer but there's always that time where you try it you know oh we don't have any of this we'll try that and it's like well this was way better <laughs> we're just gonna do it that way so <laughs> Um, A fun twist on beer right now, too, is uh, I I can't quite remember what we're calling it, but Cody LeBlanc, our beer guy, is doing a beer cocktail. Okay. So kind of like almost like a Rattler with PBR. (laughs) So what other um, approaches can you take with beer? You've mentioned, uh, I guess, marinades or brining. You've made mustard. What other kind of uh, ways can you utilize beer in the cooking? Uh, yeah, so we've done we've done cakes, we've done breads. Um, the Dijons are always a hit for sure. I feel like I've done a lot of cool things with beer, but we we've done some like beer ice cream. Um, I, I like kind of playing with some of the beer ingredients too, like uh, sorghum. I've done a lot of fun stuff with sorghum, so um, you know, including ice creams and kind of baked goods and and that satisfies of course your gluten-free customers yes so yeah. there's a beer ingredient but there's no gluten so yeah that's great. absolutely yeah. yeah actually we did a really good like sorghum pumpkin pie a while ago okay that was amazing nice. yeah very cool so you did mention the four hands uh and we're actually happen to be sitting in the room where um the four hands uh series takes place uh, but other than the name, I don't, uh, you know, I, I've heard it's a great, a great time and good food, but, but give us a little bit of background on the concept of what the Four Hands uh, series is. So Four Hands started uh, last January. It was kind of an idea that uh, Mark Gray came up with of bringing in a local chef and doing a themed dinner. Uh, when we originally started the series, it was like 30 to 40 seats. Uh, And we would do, you know, six to eight courses. Uh, Recently, we've renovated this room we're sitting in into Cassiopeia. Um, It's just 12 seats. It's a beautiful room. And we've decided to put four hands in here. So it's it's very intimate. Um, You know, you're sitting right next to a stranger sometimes and you're getting a much more elevated experience. We do up to 12 courses now, and usually they're smaller, more refined plates. Mm -hmm. Um, So limiting it from 40 seats down to 12 seats has given us a lot of room to be more, you know, fancy and creative. All right, so Janie, you're actually going to uh, prepare now something for us that includes um, some beer in the recipe, Um, a beer brined pork sausage. So we're gonna head off to the kitchen and get you to uh, get you to make that. I'm gonna hover over you because I'm curious, and then uh, we'll come back and try it out. All right, we're back. Uh, we have some food in front of us. It looks immaculate. Uh, Janie, why don't you explain to us what we have in front of us? So we have our uh, house-made pork sausage. It's getaway um, pork, and it's brined in a whole bunch of beer. <laughs> 
It's served with colcan and mashed potatoes, which is pretty much just creamed potatoes with cabbage and kale and roasted garlic. And then on top is a burnt onion jus, which also has beer in the sauce. And it's topped with a uh, curdito, which is sort of like a sauerkraut with jalapeno, carrot, and oregano. Oh my god, that sounds right. <laughs> You're literally <laughs> drooling. <laughs> Tyler, <laughs> Tyler and I are struggling over here. We're just <laughs> staring at the food while Janie talks. Uh, all right, well, I'm digging in. I have to say, I did. I made a chicken Diane over uh, the Christmas holiday, and I, I, I took a little bit of uh, Janie's advice, and I, I had been drinking a pint of pale ale, uh, and I used the pale ale rather than the white wine to, to make my sauce, and it, it just turned out excellent, and you could really taste um, some of the malt profile, some of the sweetness, and a little bit of the, the bitterness that blended well with the, the Dijon mustard that was also in the dish. Really, really spot on. Uh, so, so get creative, guys, and get get trying new things with with your beer. Next month on the show, we're going to talk about beer recipe creation and some tips and tricks that will help you along the way. That's it for the Brew HQ crew. We'll see you next month. Cheers. Cheers.